Hey, hey family, my name is Kiki Soto. I'm a Zone 5B gardener living in upstate New York. Welcome to Urban Girl Gardening and Lifestyle. If you are new, thank you so much for being here. Please take a moment and hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment. Let me know that you're here. If you are returning, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you so much. So besides running to the garden real quick for like herbs for tea or to throw into a dish or something like that, I really haven't been out in the garden in about a week and a half. Maybe even longer, yeah. It's been about a week and a half, two weeks since my last harvest and inspection and in garden time, guys. That is a long time. So we're gonna do a walkthrough and see what's going on, see what looks good, see what doesn't, like those split tomatoes because we've had a lot of rain lately too. So some veggies have just like exploded in growth and some veggies, some things might just be going bad on the vine. Some plants haven't reacted to all that rain very well, like this tomato plant here. So we're gonna take a walk through it. We're gonna see what's going on. You know, I always say that beans and potatoes are gonna be the vegetables that save the world. Anyone can grow them, anyone can plant them. You don't need to have a green thumb to do it. I have been harvesting beans all spring and summer and now going into the fall long and I am so grateful for it. Canning beans, freezing beans, bean salad, it, it, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So if you're not growing beans regularly in succession planting throughout the season, we're definitely gonna do it together next year. That lemon balm is my love child. Uh, started from seed, I stuck the plant in the ground and it just exploded and I'm constantly taking from it to get some lemon balm tea, um, which is delicious. We've made lemon balm lemonade, lemon balm jelly. Mm. If you're not growing lemon balm, besides all its medicinal properties, it's absolutely delicious and the smell is yummy. And Having this bush there has really kept the mosquitoes down as well. So we got another split tomato. I love these pink oxart tomatoes. I will grow them every season. They're so beautiful. And I'm actually not going to toss that one. Um, it's coming inside with me. We're going to eat it right away because they taste so delicious. Didn't I tell you about them beans? Look at them. Still coming the gift that keeps on giving. If you have kids that don't like to eat cooked canned um, green beans, get them in the garden growing their own and I guarantee you they will eat them fresh. My kids don't like cooked vegetables, but they are garden babies. They like the taste of fresh vegetables. So for many different reasons, a lot of us gardeners have had really, really tough seasons. Um, this growing season, we've had more disease than I'm used to seeing. Our climates have been different, um, you know, colder than it's supposed to be or hotter than it's supposed to be. There's there's always been something. I've seen more varieties of um, insects and it's just, Things have been a little out of control, but the garden is still producing. 
even though there have been losses, like that was a banana melon. Two weeks ago, I had banana melons growing, but when you're not present in your garden, you invite critters, the squirrels, the chipmunks, the birds, they see food and they see no one there to guard it. <laughs> so anyway, this is strawberry popcorn. I planted quite a few of these, but only a few came up and I remember seeing holes and whatnot. So I think I think the birds were pecking at the popcorn when I first planted them and, and pulling them up. But it's okay, I got a few and we're gonna check this out and see what's going on in here. Oh, she is beautiful. Oh my gosh. So, oh, a lot of you already know how I feel about corn and growing corn. And I'm so excited to have this strawberry popcorn. Last year we did blue popcorn. And if you're interested in seeing that video, let me know and I'll drop the link in the comments or in the description box. But yeah, we grew blue popcorn. So this is exciting to have the strawberry popcorn this season. I really didn't think I was gonna get anything, y'all. I haven't been out here hand pollinating or anything like that so amen amen so before we inspect this little brassica area over here check out what i saw from afar i got some cucumbers i thought these vines were dead um, I guess all the rain we got brought them back because those are definitely crystal apple cucumbers. So we're going to go get them babies. So this bed is full of brassicas, which is your kales, your broccolis, um, anything in the cabbage family really. And I planted in some lima beans a while ago and they're starting to come in. So most of this was planted back in April, most of the brassicas from my winter sowing jugs. If you're interested in winter sowing, you live in a cooler area like I do, then I suggest you start saving your milk in water gallon jugs so that we can do it again in a few months yeah we get a head start on the growing season but anyway so the purple that you see there that's supposed to be cauliflower it probably should have sprouted um i probably should have harvested full heads of cauliflower a few months ago but because our climate has been kind of weird it it just it hasn't grown right it's now shooting up more like purple sprouting broccoli which it is not it is supposed to be cauliflower but i'm going to harvest it and eat it all the same what you're seeing now is this beautiful celery that i'm going to chop back soon and start making my seasonings with um, some celery salt uh, gotta have a dehydrator y'all gotta have a dehydrator i love making my own seasonings and i'm happy to see more people doing it on youtube um, I've given away a few dehydrators because I want to see people preserving the harvest as much as possible and that's what's needed. So these marigolds I will not be planting in my garden again. These are Cracker Jack marigolds and yes the pollinators are still loving them but they take forever to bloom. The height doesn't bother me at all but they really take a long time to bloom. So next year, I'll go back to doing just your regular everyday marigolds. Now, over here is the glass gem corn. And as you can see, baby, it's been doing good with a little bit of neglect. <laughs> I don't suggest neglecting your gardens. I don't. Not on purpose anyway, but it's so nice. It's so nice to come through and see that things are still going along, that nature is still naturing, and that God is still God, and he still sees your vision and is helping you, you know, when you can't help yourself. But somebody need to help this corn because the animals, oh, I have seen squirrels jumping around in here. I've seen birds landing in here. So... On top of that, we've had really torrential rain, like really torrential rain. So the stems have started to crack, um, but it's okay. It's the end of the season and whatever I get, I get. I also have pole beans climbing up this um, corn stalk. So if you guys remember, we did that together in one of my videos, planting corn and beans together, two of the three sisters. But look, y'all look, 
it's beautiful this is glass gem corn you can use it for cornmeal or for popcorn and i think we're going to be doing popcorn because the kids they really love it So this ear of corn here is shorter, it's smaller because it wasn't fully pollinated, but it's okay. We still got some um, pretty colorful corn out of it. And this one here, this one had already started drying on the stalk, which is pretty cool and convenient. And look how beautiful the colors turned out. That is some beautiful corn. This is nature, this is just beautiful. You can't buy these colors at all. I'll be putting out a video on the drying process and some fun popping content, so stay tuned for that. This is a Valentier pumpkin gourd, which I'm pretty excited about. We did grow gourds last season as well, so this is pretty cool. I wasn't expecting it, so hey, I will take it. I will, especially with all the squash and pumpkin losses that I've had this season. The squash vine borers have been out of control. So I have enjoyed very few of these little finger eggplants and that is because there's something else that comes out and eats them before I can get to them. I didn't even know, well, I don't know y'all. I guess there's a pest for everything, but I'll take what I can get. So hopefully I'll be harvesting these potatoes soon. These are the potatoes that sprouted in my kitchen and I just threw them in the bag. So I'm excited to see what actually comes of them because potatoes were not a part of my plan this season. So hopefully we'll be harvesting these very soon. All right, y'all, so real quick, check out these peppers. These are big gem peppers, and they're like a little milder than a jalapeno, so not too spicy, and they're supposed to be the world's largest chili peppers. Um, first time in my garden. These are serranos, always have them in my garden. I, I love serrano peppers. And then we have cayennes. That's one that is completely ripe because it's red and it's ready to go. And it's kind of hard to see all the peppers because they are green and they are camouflaged with the plant. This is blue spice basil. Oh, I have a video about all the different basil varieties that I grew and their medicinal properties, what they're used for. And that blue spice basil makes an amazing tea. We got some uh, bird damage from sunflower seeds. Next year, I'm going to change all of this around. Um, the sunflowers are gonna be planted in the back against the wall, and I'm actually gonna dig up those asparagus crowns that I have back there and move them, so things are gonna be real different. Um, yeah, because the birds are getting on my nerves. <laughs> So right here, I was just checking on the size of the parsnips just to see if they were ready. I interplanted them and with my peppers and it's always a good idea to make the most of your space. Um, I like to plant carrots or parsnips or turnips, stuff like that, root vegetables in between the rows of my peppers, um, tomatoes and plants that will be growing above ground just so they sh can share space and also the plants can provide a little bit of shade to plants that are more sensitive to hot weather like carrots so now we're on the other side of the garden checking out more peppers i believe this is a cubanelle my signage is all over the place every year i think it's going to be okay and <laughs> it's not i'm going to get better i am i am this one is a lemon habanero and i've harvested quite a few of them i like to harvest them when they're ripe um, because peppers have a tendency to dry out. They will ripen when you take them off of the plant, but then they'll start to dry too. And I want the full flavor of the peppers, so I kind of just harvest them. I try to wait as long as possible, but I'll take them when they're green if I have to, which I'll probably have to soon. So, okay, those little peppers are lemon, hot lemon peppers as well. So I have lemon habanero and hot lemon peppers. And then here's more basil. And again, if you guys wanna check out that video on the different basil varieties, I'll just go ahead and link it in the description box. And if I forget, I'm sure someone will remind me. Let's 
see. I believe these are paprika peppers. And this one is a leisure pepper. It's still growing, obviously. It's kind of small. So we got a nice little harvest there, guys. And I am very grateful for it. Once again, I wanna say thank you to everyone who is joining me on this growing journey. Thank you to everyone who's been here. I appreciate you still coming back and I appreciate your support. I just ask that we all continue to just be patient and kind and give grace to ourselves and one another. And let's continue to encourage each other to be our best selves and to go forward on this path of self-sustainability. Learn with me, grow with me. I love y'all for real. Bye.